Hey guys, what's up? Just played a really interesting game, um, five minute blitz game, in the, and we get into the Charlock Gambit. And I get a, I think a kind of a novel line. I'm just gonna click good sport, good game, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do, I've literally just finished the game. I'm gonna play it through with you. We're gonna analyze it without the aid of the machine. And then we'll have a look with the aid of the engine and see what happens. So the Charlotte Gambit, if you don't know it, this is a, a really um, interesting, let's say, response to 1D4. Um, it, see, it's working pretty well for me. Um, in fact, let, let me just, I'm gonna pull up the chess.com explorer right now, and we're gonna play through the first move, so I'm gonna flip the board, okay? So I'll show you the first moves, and then we'll see how well it's performing for me across all games. Okay, so it starts with the England Gambit. And the England Gambit is pretty dubious, kind of tricky and trappy. There's one famous trappy line um, that most D4 players will know by the time they get to 1300, probably. Okay, um, The best move for white here is to capture the pawn. White wins on average 64% of the time, but that's at the master level. I'm going to switch it to my games as black and we'll see what happens. Okay, so D takes E5 is the best move for white. Anything else equalizes for black. So white really does need to take the pawn, but I have a 56% win rate over 283 games from here. Okay, so they take the pawn. And then my second move here is D6. Okay, um, there's a similar one from Bird's Opening that I can't quite remember what it's called right now, but um, so D6, and again, I'm winning 59% here. Now, if they take the second offered pawn, which they are very likely to do, like we see, it's the most common move, E takes D6 is the most common move, um, then this is, well, this is the Charlotte Gambit, or the Hartlaup Charlotte Gambit, right? Um, this pawn is already doubled, it's well out in space, you know, who's going to play f4? Well, nobody, you know, to defend the pawn. The only other real move is is knight to f3. Now, I, knight to f3 does all right for white, okay? But the most common move, played more than half the time, they're going to take a new recapture with this. And now, pretty much whatever happens, um, I'm, I'm doing better. Uh, c3 has been the most successful for white with three wins and three losses. So, back to the game. Okay. So here we are in the game. So e5, the England gambit. England gambit accepted. Then d6 accepted, and we take back with the bishop. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I'm just going to take a little bit of time to talk you through. The key feature of this is there's no pawns on the d-file. The d-file is an open file. There's no pawns of either color on there. Now, pretty much whatever happens from this point, you're going to make the same following moves, right? Your next moves are going to be knight c6, usually bishop to g4, queen to e7, and long castles, okay? So, okay, they play knight to c3. Now, knight to c3 is not the most common move here. Let's just flip back over to the explorer. Knight to f3 is most common, okay? Knight to c3, I'm still winning 69% uh, here, right? Knight to c3 is the second most common move. Okay, back to the game. Knight to c3, doesn't matter. You, you play knight to c6 anyway, right? Uh, they now push the pawn. So this is one way that white can go. Apologies, I've got kittens trying to wreck the place in the background. Hope you can still hear me above the racket. Can't wait to get rid of these furry little bastards. If they're not trashing the place, they're running around, galloping around the place, looking for new little corners to take a shit. Anyway... Back to the chess. Okay, so as I'm saying, this is one approach that white can take. So they're gonna fianchetto on the king side, and this is okay, this is okay. So the normal trap that we wanna do is get our queen here, castle, get our rook on d8, lined up with the queen, x-raying through the bishop, okay? And then if they don't do this, if they just develop normally, they castle, the king is on g1, right? And then our trick move, is to capture on h2 with check, right? Then winning the queen with a rook, okay? Because our rook has gone to d8, okay? But that's not possible in this line, but it's okay because we still have potentially 
Bishop takes g3 in front of the castle king, removing a key pawn. So we play bishop to g4 anyway. They play knight to f3. We play queen to e7 anyway. Right? They fear and get to the bishop. We castle anyway. So it's a fa the same first moves, whatever they do. Move seven. I've played this so many times. Okay. Now, white castles. And this is absolutely fine. What are we going to do? We're going to eliminate Gary with the discovery on the queen. But note, take note of this horse. The queen's horse is already developed on c3. And this is what I think is interesting about this game. I capture on g3. An opponent here has a jolly good think for 32 seconds. And opponent now, <clears throat> instead of retreating the queen or whatever, just getting out of the way or, or blocking with the bishop or whatever, um, opponent now plays knight to d5. Okay, now I have to have a think, 48 seconds. Note I've only used nine seconds of my time so far. This is no increment on this. I've literally used nine seconds for nine moves. Eight moves. Right, now, I've got a bishop under attack. Right, this bishop here is not under attack, he's okay. But he's attacking my queen. Now, if he takes my queen, you might think, well, I take his queen, but no. Hold on, just one moment. He takes my queen, that comes with check. And I can't immediately recapture his queen, I'm not going to get it, am I? I have to take his knight with my knight, and then his queen runs away. So we can't do that, that is not an option. Okay. Do I capture the knight, but then queen takes rook, and we've lost the exchange, and I'm about to, you know, well, potentially I might lose the bishop, but probably not, right? So if I take, queen takes, whatever. Um, so how do you resolve this situation? Well, you always have to remember that whenever there is a threat on the board, there are always, nearly always, multiple ways that you can respond to it, okay? So you boil it down. You, you have to kind of resolve the function, right? Um, break it down to its essential parts. Well, what's going on? Okay, well, the, the facts of the matter are, I have a bishop under attack, right? I've just won a pawn, but that's poor compensation for an entire bishop. And my queen is under attack, so we're in a situation where we are attacked twice. However, with this knight move, what else can we say about the knight? So the knight's doing two things here. It's moved to d5, attacking my queen. But it is also blocking the rook's attack on the queen. Now, when you block, when you interpose a piece to block an attack, a, a piece of lower value, you are also p -p -p pinning the piece, right? So the knight has pinned itself in front of her match. Therefore, what can we what can we do? We can turn this around and say, okay, now I'm going to try and take advantage of the pinned knight. Okay, and one way to do that is simply queen e6, right? So I've just I've got out of the attack, right? And I'm taking advantage of this pinned knight. So now I've got two attackers on the knight, right? Yes, you can take my bishop, but if you do, I take your knight and attack your queen as well. So, what do they do? Here they play knight to d4. Now we're going to analyze this with the computer and see if there's a better approach later on. They play knight to d4 with a fork on my knight and my queen. So obviously I take the knight with my knight and now out comes their queen. So now their queen is attacking my bishop which is defended. So that's not a big problem. Um, but notice that since this knight moved to here it's now opened up this bishop, right? So this bishop is now, so this is a clever move by white, it's now a defender of the knight. Okay, so after this trade, I have attacker, one, two, and he has defenders, one, two. All right, so if I take the knight, bishop takes my rook, I've just given up an exchange for no reason, and, you know, I've still got this issue. So what do we do? Again, you have to break it down. Okay, The knight is still pinned. The knight is adequately defended. This is fine. I have a bishop still under attack by two pawns. Okay, So what can we do about this situation? Well, bishop to e5 is a solution. 
right? My queen still defends this bishop, and we are now hitting the enemy queen. I've done my job, the bishop's done its job of capturing Gary, and now the king is slightly um, exposed, and the queen's gonna have to move. Off she moves to c5 square, and now, um, Pause if you wish and try and guess Hunty's next move. Because I'm kind of pleased with this one. And it it's a it's the same theme as the classic Charlic attack, which I do find comes out in many forms. Okay, so the theme is a discovery. Look at this bishop, right? This bishop's normally here, and we take on h2 with check, right? sometimes winning the queen, very often winning the queen, okay? But there's an, there's an alternative, okay? In fact, it's not my next move. Um, my, my immediate concern is, is the queen here, so what I do is I push b6, and now, apologies, the queen has moved to c4, and this is significant, right? What do we notice about this queen, and also this rook, right? So pause again if you need. I'll give you a couple of seconds to find my next move. My next move is bishop takes e2. And this is a fork on the rook and the queen. Right? Oh, you're thinking, hang on, you muppet. Queen can just take the, the bishop. But what happens if queen takes bishop? Right? We have the old trick. And this is the big difference, right? My queen is on e6, where it's defended by the f7 pawn. If the queen captures this bishop, she is not on a protected square, right? She is undefended. So if she takes there, it's the old trick. Bishop takes h2 with check, and I win the queen and romp home to win the game. <clears throat> so what happens is, I mean, basically now my opponent just crumbles. Just completely crumbles. Uh, takes the pawn, I recapture with the a-pawn. And now they come in with check with the queen, missing the fact of this super dangerous bishop, which literally only just moved to that square. Bishop takes queen, move a pawn forward, takes the rook, king here, check, bang, check, blocks, mate, okay? And all of that happened, I only used two minutes of my clock. So I thought that was really interesting. And the key point is, right, this night, that this is a move that protects Right? It blocks the attack on the queen, right? Castles, right? They so often just castle here. Gary is mine, and now this, and this is the interesting thing. So I'm gonna hit the game review button. We are going to uh, see what the fish has to say about all of this shenanigans. So I'm down at, what, 13.95 now. Um, yeah, computer didn't like, so, Interestingly now, it's got miss. Miss is a new term rather than missed win, which I kind of appreciate. And it's, they've got a really nice color scheme going, but anyway, forget that, okay. Blah, 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 okay, best move. But white is plus 1.6 here. By the way, white shouldn't capture here. White should not capture, I think, you know, knight f3 um, gives white a solid advantage. If you, if you are a d4 player, you ever face this, don't take the second pawn. Never take the second pawn. It's like in the Danish, just don't. Okay, but still white is plus 1.6. However, in the real world, back to reality, we tend to win. Now, knight to c3 is good, knight to f3 is best. I do this, it, it, you know, it's thinking computer-wise, but, you know, it doesn't understand the point of the Charlotte Gambit. Okay. They prepare the fianchetto. It's said, actually, knight should have come in with this. Which is a thought, actually. It is a thought. So maybe that's, that merits some, some other uh, investigation. So I do this move, like we say, anyway, right? They play this, I do that anyway, because these are my, you know, these are the moves. And again, the computer doesn't like it. And again, it's like got white nearly one and a half in front. Uh, and then we have castles. And that's a mistake, and now white is only plus um, point one knight. Okay, they should have brought the, the knight in here. So we maybe it's worth really investigating. You know what happens with 
a knight c3 because like we said it's it's relatively common okay that's not the best move knight to f6 was better maybe knight to f6 first carry on development don't just go for the the cheap shot okay now that's a great move they found the only good move okay and this is worth remembering so Queen e6 is a mistake. Better is queen to c5, okay? And now, this is for my benefit. I'm going to remember this. Queen to c5, let's have a look. So the idea about queen to c5 is that it pins this pawn. So this pawn can't capture the, the bishop, right? But this pawn still could. Best move actually here, according to the machine, is knight g5, threatening a fork on both rooks. Um, don't know if that's played very often. We, we could check it. We shall see. Um, so queen c5, best move. And white only has a small edge here. But again, remember, this, this knight is still pinned because of the rook. You know, that's kind of dangerous. Um, but anyway, let's go back. So this plus 2.6 now, right? And if they were aware of this idea. It's not too obvious, but, you know, it's certainly there. It's there on the board, you know. The rook fork is on because I've long castled. You put the rooks on the same colour there, yeah. And this is a missed win. Okay, and now it is black. Black has the advantage. And that's a miss. Oh, what? Queen e5 was all that was needed. I guess he could take here and we recapture. Hanging, having said that. Um, so if I do queen e5, and he takes, I guess I can just take with check, eh? Yeah, that's actually winning. Bishop takes h2, and then this is forced. Bishop takes, b takes c6, okay, so we take, we take the uh, pawn. And we're just winning from this point. Interesting stuff. Okay, and guys, this is the, this is the point. You know, you could have a game. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose, but exploring these branches of the game is is how you how you improve, right? I'm here learning lines that no one has necessarily ever played against me, but I might. It might just ring a bell, you know, if if I ever see that. Okay, so interesting stuff. But anyway, he comes in, I take, not the best thing. Queen takes d4 is the best move, and now again it fancies white. Here, bishop e5 is best, and lo and behold, that's the move I find, so I'm happy with that. But it's, white is still plus 2.38. If he finds queen a7, which is not what was played. Okay. Queen takes a7 is best. Yeah, so I play b6, and that is best, because it prevents that queen attack, which could have just turned the tables. And look at, as well at this lovely bishop, slicing right down the board. All we have to do is move the knight out of the way, and it's looking very ugly, actually, for black. So queen to c4, that's a mistake, and that's a brilliant move. Woohoo! Always nice, and pretty much now whatever white does, he's toast. That's apparently excellent. There you go. And that's not, that's just not, because now it's minus 16. And we know what happens from that point, right? But the point is, right, when we see this knight come out, okay, and we try and launch our attack, okay, now here, look, here it's saying knight to f6, and perhaps the point of knight to f6. So let's play this through, right? So if their knight comes out, their queen's knight, we have to counter it. And the point is that, just like in so many openings, when you bring out the opposing knight, they are both looking at the same squares in the center. Okay, so let's say they do this, we do this, they castle, we do this. Okay, so we're moved behind now as black because we've played this move. And, right, queen e1 is the best move, bishop d2 is the second best move. Knight to d5 is the third, but let's say they throw a knight to, no, I don't know, what would they do here? I don't know what they would do. 
I quite often see this idea, right? Um, you know, so they'll quite often put a bishop there or a knight there because they, they see the potential discovery. And then king b8. When this knight comes out, we should think about countering it before we try and unleash this, this uh, trick. So there you go. I thought that was interesting. If you're a Charlotte lover like me, um, hope it's been useful for you too. But thanks for watching. I'll see you later.